talking about vintage, I have a project that I want to share with you that is vintage inspired flowers. And these are created from ribbons and you just start with plain white ribbon and you dip this into acrylic paint. And I actually, I have thought about this technique for years and years and years and had wanted to try it. I don't know why I never did. But recently, I Love to Create had a live show, mm -hmm. and they sent me a sampling of their paints, and I love their fabric paint because it's very, very soft. Yeah, that's really cool because <laughs> you don't find that with acrylic paints. You can't get that out right. of Right. You definitely paint. notice a difference in this technique if you're using the soft fabric paint versus an acrylic paint. The acrylic paint makes your ribbons a lot stiffer. It still works, but I definitely love mm -hmm. the softer paint. This cool is colors. very cool. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like me to show you how this is These done? do. Okay. <laughs> Here are some of the materials that you will need to create your ribbon roses. I have white ribbon and this I believe is some sort of poly blend. The bolts of ribbon that I pulled this from do not have any labeling on it but it appears to be some sort of poly blend. And for this example I am just using white ribbon. Of course you need your scissors. In order to make your flowers, you'll need a corsage pin or a long quilting pin. I'm also using Lutrador for the backing for my flowers. A needle and thread, clothespin, and your paints. I also have some paper towels ready here. For your paints, I have found that I prefer to use a fabric paint like Tulip Soft Fabric Paint because when it dries on the ribbon it remains very very soft. You can use acrylic paints, they just dry a bit more stiff. I have poured my paints into the bottom of these little cups and I just add a splash of water and mix it around just a little bit. I'm going to use the end of my pen to mix. Really this depends on how dark you want your color as to how much water you add. And a lot of times I don't mix it all the way because I like the look of that paint when it's not fully mixed. So grab yourself a craft stick and stir up your paints a little bit better than I have. I take my white ribbon and I start to roll it. And what you want to do is keep those edges even on both sides because when you dip it into your paint that gives you better coverage on your paint into your ribbon. But again, if it's not exactly even, not a problem. Take your clothespin and just hold it. I like to have a clean container. This one's clean except for some paint that's dry on it. Ready to put my ribbon into once that I've dipped it into my color baths and that's how I leave it to set a while before I open it up to hang it to dry. So this is all you need to do. This is so cool. You just dip it in and if you notice the ribbon just soaks up that color. Did you see how fast that I dipped it into that paint? If you want to, you can come back and hold it a little bit longer and it's going to soak up more of that paint. See that? Isn't that cool? And again, where the paint is a little bit thicker, because I've dipped it right into the paint at the bottom of this container, you can dab off some of that excess so it doesn't dry too stiff. You can then take and dip the other side of your ribbon if you want it too toned. So I'm just adding some color along the edges. Isn't that cool? That is how easy this is to do. As I mentioned, I just pop that right into the container. At this point, you can take off your clothespin and just leave it set there for a little while. Once this is set for a while, then I would open it up and just loop it over a hanger and hang it out to dry. What's nice too is if you do one color and leave part of the ribbon its original color. In this case, of course, it will be white. And that gives you a nice effect. What I want to do on this is actually add a little bit more water because I want this to be a little bit more subtle. Dip it quick, just on the edge, and watch that color soak into the ribbon. 
And that's all you need to do. What was that? One second of dipping it into that paint. Dab off the excess. And again, just put this into a container that, <laughs> this isn't clean, but it has dry paint in it. And just let it set in there to dry. Once your ribbons have dried completely, then you can start creating your vintage inspired ribbon roses or flowers. There are many great books on the art of crafting with ribbon. So check out your local craft store, go online, and find books that have patterns to give you ideas of how you would like to create with your ribbon. These I happened to pick up at a local consignment store. It was a crafting score. I was so excited to get these two books, The Artful Ribbon by Candace Kling and A Passion for Ribbonry by Kamela Nitschke. And these have given me lots of great ideas. Another design that's actually in one of these books that I had seen before is called A Hat Pin Rose. And this is an example of what it looks like, and I want to show you really quickly how this is made. I'm using Luterdor for the back of my rose. I notice in the pattern books it talks about crinoline, but I have some Luterdor, which is a non-woven crafting fabric that's used for all sorts of mixed media, and it's really perfect for this particular technique. This is a much wider ribbon than I just showed you how to dye and color that I have used a very, very light shade of my lime green along with a light lavender. And you would fold this in half, and I'm going to fold it in half once more, and use my corsage pin and press it through to hold the center. The history behind the hat pin rose is that when women did not have much money to spend on ribbons, what they would do is reuse them. Instead of stitching them in place, they would actually just create their roses like this and then take the hat pin out at the end of the day and be able to reuse their ribbon. So I've folded that in half and in half again. And what you do is you simply start, you want it tight in the center. So I am rolling this pretty tight as I go and you just start wrapping it around that pin. In my example, you could see if this is the size pin that you were using, if you were creating this just as a hat pin rose, you'd have to stop here pretty quickly because it's going to stop catching each of the rounds. But on my finished example, what I did is each time I came around, I stitched it to hold it in place. Look at the colors on that. Isn't that fabulous? To be able to custom color your own ribbons. So you would just keep bringing that around. So what I want to show you is one of the narrower ribbons, how you use the same technique. So here is one of the ribbons that I've colored with the same turquoise and lime green that I just showed you how to use. You're going to tuck that in and again the very center you want it to twist and roll and then just tuck it. And this is where it would come in and you'd want to stitch. So you come from the back, use your needle and thread and you start stitching this. I think everyone knows how to stitch, so I don't need to show you how to do that. So this shows you the beauty of the splotchiness of the technique that you can get in coloring this type of ribbon with this technique of just dipping it in. And it looks beautiful when you have it variegated here. And also, if you want this more of an antique look, you could dip this into a tea dye bath after you've colored it which would give it more of that faded, aged look. So depending on how intense you want your colors for your finished example, would be if you want to put it into that tea bath or not. So you can see on this ribbon, I need to unwind it here so I can keep winding. 
And as you get a little bit farther out, then you don't need to, to wrap it quite as tight. Again, if you're actually stitching this down, it's going to hold those rows in place, especially in this example where you're not turning it quite as tight right here. You're definitely going to need to stitch. But that gives you an idea of how cool these flowers look. So find yourself some really great ribbon design books and follow the patterns in there to create all sorts of looks. Another technique is you can create a bud by rolling some of your ribbons together, stitching them together. You could also wire these and get all sorts of different looks. These would be pretty with some green ribbons to create some leaves and these could be flowing down. And that is all there is to creating your own custom colored, custom dyed ribbons.